Okay. Or stand, we're going from the brain, moving down basically into the mid face. And uh, Dr. Gatino here is the chairman of facial, oral, facial, and maxillary. Every time I introduce him, I get it all screwed up. And so, anyway, what he does is do fascinating 3D reconstruction simulation basically for mid face lesions. Jamie, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for, for the invitation. Uh, so we use, uh, we're lucky enough that we have an amazing uh, virtual reality lab uh, at, in our department here. We have a lot of people who have developed uh, anatomic aligners. So it's a software for facial uh, surgical simulation. It was all developed here at this institution. And we use it for different things, for technetic surgery, for distraction osteogenesis, for trauma. But I'll just give you a simple example. This young lady is 18 years old, and uh, she had a no normal childhood. And when she turned 13 years old, her jaw started shifting to one side and became more and more and more progressive for about two or three years when the deformity stopped. She has something we call unilateral condylar hyperplasia, when the growth plate of one of the mandibular condyles just goes crazy, it grows autonomously for a couple of years and they, they develop a, a deformity and the upper jaw then gets canted to compensate for that. And uh, she comes to us because the face is deformed, she has an asymmetry and her bite is off. The teeth don't come together, she cannot chew well, so she needs a, a reconstruction. So uh, in the past, we were very artistic about it. What we want to do now is to do this with mathematics. So you have a face that is asymmetric, and you need to construct it to symmetry and give it a normal shape. So the most important thing is you have to create a frame of reference to the face. However, when you do a CAT scan, the, the position, the orientation of a CAT scan as it comes out of the scanner is random. And we need to create the sagittal plane, the coronal plane, the, the axial plane, However, when a face is completely asymmetric, there are no frames of reference. So how do we go about building a frame of reference to the face when everything's asymmetric? So what we do is, a, this is a technique we develop here in our lab, where we have a cloud of points of important landmarks of the whole face, and you create this, this cloud of points, but everything's skewed to one side. You cannot use just this information. There is no way mathematically you can process this information to create a plane of symmetry. So what we learn is that a nice trick is that what if we take this cloud of points and mirror image? So now we have two cloud of points, one that skews to the left and the other that skews to the right, and then superimpose them. But we need to superimpose them in a very special way because the asymmetric landmarks will skew the superimposition. They're outliers. So uh, what we do here is what we have this pretty cool algorithm where we start superimposing. We do about 50 different superimpositions in that way we iterate the superimpositions and each time we measure the distance between corresponding landmarks and we, the bigger the distance, the more asymmetric the landmarks are and the more we ignore them in the second superimposition. So what we're doing is we're learning to lean in those parts of the face that are the most symmetric to create a sagittal plane. And it doesn't matter where the deformity is, we don't care, the algorithm is smart, to automatically will find those parts of the face that are the most symmetrical to automatically create a frame of reference for us to be able to build symmetry on the face. So this is a computer-generated sagittal plane. We call it the primal sagittal plane. That's the one the body wanted to create to begin with before there was symmetry. So this is a pretty neat thing that we can do, take anything that is completely skewed out of a scanner and create a perfect frame of reference for the reconstruction. And a, what's pretty neat, this is anatomic aligners. That's the software we develop here. And we just push a button, and they tell us the pitch, roll, and yo that we need to type into computer to automatically reorient this CAT scan to the ideal frame of reference we use for the facial reconstruction. So we just type these numbers that the algorithm will give us. We put boom, and the whole thing is right on. And the next thing we need to do is to move it to the center, and now we have a pretty accurate frame of reference to, upon which can build the whole face, and you can see it there from all the different uh, directions. So the next thing we do is we want to be able to sh measure deformity. 
in a quantitative way, using mathematics, rather than just using our, our, uh, our imagination, our artistic sense. So in the past, there was this field of traditional cephalometry, and is, we're moving away from it, and we're developing a new approach. We call it modern geometric cephalometry, where each part of the face we consider to be a geometric object. And we can independently measure the shape, the size, the position, the orientation of the symmetry of each of these things and get numeric values that then we can use for facial reconstruction. Uh, so we're going to just talk about a, a few things. For example, we have a, a way of measuring the orientation of the jaws that are out of alignment automatically. The computer will create all these landmarks and create frames of reference do, using principal component analysis and will give you exactly how many degrees uh, of yaw uh, rotation or roll rotation or pitch rotation we have. So when we go to reconstruct these things, we just type numeric things and everything goes into the correct alignment. We, can, we were the first uh, group uh, in the world to develop a metric for asymmetry. We can actually quantify facial asymmetry with a particular number and we can map it exactly where the different areas of asymmetry are on the face. Uh, we do, we'll call it a weighted procustus superimposition of, of mirror images where you take this side and you superimpose it on the other side. So this blue point is the landmark of this side and this vector tells us the reflected landmark from the other side. But this is a very particular type of superimposition that uses a lot of advanced mathematics where we can really quantify at each particular point uh, the, the asymmetry. And he would tell us here exactly what the pathology is. The biggest discrepancy is in the condyle. That is the side that is growing abnormally. This condyle grew 11 millimeters more than the other side. And the rest of the deformities are secondary deformities because of that abnormal growth. So we can map where is the pathology occurring, and we know exactly how much asymmetry we have in the, re in the rest of the face. Uh, you know, for growth, we always use spec scans. However, we have a lot of false positives. When you have a false positives, you have to do a big operation to remove the abnormal growth plate. But if, if we eliminate those growth po uh, false positives, we avoid uh, bigger operations. So this is just with Combeam CT data, you take two, two images 11 months apart, you superimpose them automatically in the computer. Actually, the yellow is the older, the blue is the newer. So clearly, this is not growing, although the spec scan is telling me that this is growing, that I need to go and remove this abnormal uh, growth plate. This, in a year, nothing has really changed. There is no need to do that. Saves the patient uh, a significant amount of surgery. The other thing, we, we, we gave this technology to, to our community uh, about 10 years ago and everybody's using it, one of the things we, we realized that surgeons spend one or two hours in front of the computer trying to plan a case because they go into a circular motion. They don't have a streamlined sequence. So one of the things we wanted to create in our software is sort of a streamlined approach to guide people. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes to apply some reconstruction like this if, if you know exactly, if you have a, a, a clear path. So uh, we like to think about when we're reconstructing a phase, we're three basic goals that we have. First, we want a normal occlusion, and that's jargon for a normal bite. We want the bite to be normal. We want the face to be symmetric. And we want to, the shape of the face to be average. All right? We don't want it too big or too small or, or, or too, too long or too, too short or so on. So to accomplish a normal occlusion, uh, when we do a CAT scan, the teeth are never rendered well. So we do, we have intraoral scanners, it's like a toothbrush, and you can take a rendition of the teeth and you can put them into this composite models. But we want the upper teeth and the lower teeth to automatically align to each other. That was a very, very difficult thing for us to do. All the registration algorithms that are there are to register two things that are similar. The upper teeth and the lower teeth are not similar. You cannot register them to each other. But you have to find the absolutely best coupling that there is between the two objects, even though they're not really coupling perfectly well. They don't have parts that fit perfectly well. So uh, we, we developed this. And even when the jaw is in three different pieces, they are, the computer will automatically find the best alignment. And it works about 90% of the time. No matter what you do, about 10% of the time, it fails. 
So what we're doing right now is putting deep machine learning into this uh, in artificial intelligence, because that's the only way to solve these problems into the future. And the more we do, the more we do, the more the machine will learn. So all projects that we're doing right now in, in, in involve uh, deep machine learning to make this thing better and better and better. So this is the byte uh, in the original condition, and this is what we plan to have at the end of the, of the reconstruction. Uh, the second thing, so after we put the byte together, the, the jaws here have randomly moved. We need to align the jaws now to symmetry and to facial form. So how do we go about doing that in a streamlined fashion? Now the upper jaw and the lower jaw are together into the perfect bite, uh, but now during surgery I have the freedom to move this block anywhere I want. Where is the correct position for that uh, during surgery? So uh, this is what we need to do is to obtain symmetry. So if we think, if we take a piece of bone or a, a unit, we can do a few things to that. We can translate it in space or we can rotate it in space. So we can trace, translate it forward or backwards, down, downwards or upwards, side to side, or we can rotate it in pitch and roll and, you, and yo. We have six different uh, transformations that we can do to this. Now, Translations relate to position in space, and rotation relates to uh, orientation. Uh, now, the definition of position is location of a point in space. You can only measure the position of a single point in space, not a, of, of the whole object. And rotations are movement about the point. So it became clear to us, we have to define a point up by which we can make all, need to make all these transformations. So we pick this, this central point in, the, in, in between the teeth because that's where, you know, when you smile, you want that to be right in the middle of the face, otherwise things look terrible. Uh, so these are the three trans translations and the three rotations, and we say, why don't we shuffle all these things and let's change the headings. There are three transformations to relate to symmetry. Moving something side to side changes the symmetry, rotating, uh, around the vertical axis of the face changes symmetry and rotating around the anterior posterior axis of the face changes symmetry. So that's symmetry related transformations. And this changed the face, the, sh the form of the face, but they have nothing to do with symmetry, all right? So what we say is uh, let's first make the face symmetrical by following these steps one, two, three. And the next, which we fix the facial form in four, five, and six. Uh, so this is what we implemented on our software a very simple way of sort of making a face straight. So it's all gated by numbers. The computer is telling us that the jaws are deviated to one side two millimeters. So I just come here, I say, oh, two millimeters to one side, perfect. Type two millimeters and put to the right and the thing is moved, that's it. So what is the next step? Uh, it, the yaw, which is rotation around the vertical axis, it says it's only 0 0.1 millimeters. I can leave it alone, it's 0 0.1, but why not? I'm gonna make it perfect, make it perfect. So I hit here, rotate left, that is fixed. You don't see it moving, it's 0.1 of a millimeter, so, but that's, I made it zero. The roll of the face, which is this sort of side to side canting of the face, the computer is telling me uh, here is 6.5 degrees, that's quite a bit. I just type 6.5 degrees, and I say tilt it down, boom, straight. Um, the next one, and now the face is symmetrical. I accomplished that, I'm done. Three stops, boom, 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 three numbers, the face is symmetrical. So now let's improve the face of form, make it average. Uh, so vertically, uh, I wanna move this two millimeters, uh, I'm, I'm on one millimeter up because when she smiles, she shows a lot of the gum, and that's not very pretty. So I want her to show less of the gum. I move it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to change the uh, pitch of the jaws uh, now. So I hit pitch. That's 11 degree. We have normative values that said about six degrees is normal. So I make that ideal. And that's the average number for that. And we're going to move the jaws then forwards. And uh, I have normative va values that tell me what are the ideal things for somebody of a particular gender, a particular uh, a ethnic type, and a particular age. So we just go with the numbers, and we're going to move this, this forward. Uh, and then uh, the back part of the jaw now is colliding. You see that? 
I have this big collision, so I need to align this segment to make it all, all straight. So I just go here and I start rotating all these things until I avoid any collisions that I can have at the time of surgery. There's nothing more frustrating that you move the jaws into one position and the segments start colliding with each other and you cannot align them uh, well. So here, that used to happen a lot to us. It was very frustrating and spend a lot of time trying to grind all the little things until everything fits well and we can now avoid collisions or map them perfectly well before we, we go. Um, then the chin is still off. We need to move it to one side. So we're gonna make a sec, uh, another cut on the, on the chin and uh, we're going to move it to one side, but something we couldn't ever do before, we're gonna actually rotate it. How many degrees we can rotate it in three-dimensional space until it's absolutely aligned to, to her face. Uh, so now the face is normal. So great, I made the face perfectly symmetrical, so what? What am I gonna do in the operating room? How am I gonna make that happen, all right? <laughs> so uh, what, what we do is uh, I can make a map and tells me more or less an idea where things go. Uh, and one more thing is that to be sure there is some symmetry here, now I can do a mirror image of one side to the other and I calculate the precise differences between the bones once they're mirror image and I know I need to shave a little bit of bone to one side to make it even more symmetrical. So the execution of the plan, what we do is we make references. Here I'm gonna cut the lower jaw before I fix the upper jaw deformity. So the upper jaw is in the original position, the lower jaw is in the new position, and the computer will create, it, create these wafers that relate the position of the lower jaw to the uncut upper jaw. And here, this is the final alignment. After the lower jaw is fixated in the final alignment, I cut the upper jaw and this wafer will tell me exactly where to put it into the idea of it. And we 3D print here in our own lab and those things are sterilized at you the surgery. But what about the chin? How do we know where to put the chin in three-dimensional space? So I print the model where we want it to be in the final position and I take this place and adapt it perfectly well to that and I drill holes in it. So I know where the drill holes will be and I put it back in the Combeam CAT scanner so I make a model of where the chin is and I can map the position of all the holes and I bring that back to the model and I segment it into two pieces and register each piece back to the original model on the original deformity. So what I'm doing is figuring out where the screw holes are before I make the osteotomy cut. Uh, so I made a template, a jig, that maps the position of all the holes and tells me where to make the cut and we print that uh, and we also go to surgery. So when I go to surgery, I lay that template on the chin, it drill all the holes for the plates and cut the bone, which is the opposite thing we're always done. We always make the cut, reposition, and then put the plate. Here we make the, the pilot holes for the plates before we make the cut, and just by installing the plate, it automatically will put the bone in ideal alignment. The computer also tells me all the areas that I have to resect bone, so the surgeries go very quickly. I know all that bone needs to be resected before I even attempt to put it into position to make it into the right. So that's uh, before and after. You see, we, we can get exactly what we plan. All planned using mathematics, and that's her before and after. I never in the past before this technology, I was able to give this girl perfect symmetry. And it's all about mathematics and being planned and going to surgery. And that's her, and that's her bite, perfect bite after surgery. Um, and the other thing that is very exciting, all this is the bone, but what about the soft tissue simulation? Can I do that? So what we've done is that you have the surface of the skin and you have the bone. The soft tissue is in the middle. We created a finite element model of the whole face that has all the material properties of skin, fat, muscle, and it's all internally there and it's all prefabricated. So when any new patient comes, we register the model to the surface of the skin and to the surface of the bone, and then we can run the simulation. And this is a real patient of ours that we can predict in color how the face is going to look after we move the bones. This is how the patient is going to look. We can morph all the face to exactly how the patient is going to look. 
This is what we predict this. This is the actual patient after surgery. So we can predict this incredibly accurate. This is what the computer predicts. This is what happened in real life to the patient. And this is our software. And only as good as the people I uh, surround myself with is are the people in the lab that make all these things possible. Thank you. Thank you.